JPEG is another popular web page graphic bitmap format. It's commonly used for images like those you take with your digital camera. On the left we have the file that we're going to complete with this exercise and on the right we have one for a future exercise and we're going to concentrate on the car, the man in the car, and that is a JPEG. And JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. It's a committee that formed the JPEG standard. So let's close these and get ourselves set up for this. It's going to be a brand new flash document. And we'll save it. And we'll call it practice. Now we'll import our file. So we'll go to File, Import, and we'll bring it to the library. And we only have one file here, it's a JPEG, and I, you can see the file extension .jpg. There are other file extensions that are used for JPEG, JPEG, or just JPE. And so again, you can use your sorter window down here, the pop-up that will sort out what you're looking for. If you're just looking for JPEGs, you could choose this choice, and it will show you all variations of the JPEG. And I'll just select this one that we have and open it. Okay, and then we can see that it's in the library and it has the same icon that it would have for any bitmap graphic image. So let's open up the properties for the, our car JPEG and so we select it here in the library. We can see it in the preview window and we'll double click the icon and now we can take a look at our bitmap properties and one of the things you'll see is the similarity to a GIF. It has the same update and import choices so that you need to get a new version of the file or change the actual file that you're using for that particular entry in your library. You can use the update or the import. JPEGs are used for graphics that have more than 256 colors and can go as high as 16,777,000 in some colors. And they carry their own compression information but do not carry the original bitmap that was used to create the JPEG. And you can override the compression numbers. And so if you look at the test and the compression issue, these go together, test and the compression uh, properties that are down here, its compression is to use the imported JPEG data. In other words, the compression information is in the JPEG. Just use it as is. And again, you can override this and go to custom. And you can also go back to a PNG uh, GIF compression and to see a difference in changes in the way it might look and if you choose these you can choose test and take a look at the preview window and you can go back and forth and make the changes. The bottom of all these windows do show you the actual statistics of the original size of the file and the compression results and so this is things that you can do in flash again I strongly recommend that you do all this outside of flash in the appropriate software tool such as Photoshop or fireworks so we have no more need for the properties window for our JPEG. And so on the timeline, uh, let's name the first layer car 1. And we'll do a couple versions of this just to experiment a bit with our JPEG. So we'll drag the JPEG onto the stage and just a little off stage. And you'll notice that the background is not transparent. So this is a way JPEGs work. The backgrounds are not transparent. There is a way to remove it. We'll talk about that later. Right at this point in time, let's do a little resizing here. Again, I have the free transform tool on when I start at this. You can use the letter Q to turn that on. And with the shift key down, I'll resize it down a bit. And you can see that there are changes in the quality of the JPEG as we do make these increases and decreases in size. Again, you should do this uh, type of work in another environment. Uh, however, you might want to animate the size changes. And that's usually OK because the eye can't pick up the artifacts until the transition of uh, say smaller to the original size is, is done so you can pretty good shape there. Let's create another layer make it car 2 and let's drag another copy of our symbol to the library and we'll reduce this about a quarter of the size of the stage that we're working with and what I'm going to do here is let me just skew it a little bit to the right using the bottom. And then I'm going to grab the um, left handle and I'll just drag that to the right and get kind of a flipping effect. And now it looks like he's uh, driving very speedily along. 
in his uh, convertible. Let's create another layer. And we're really not learning anything much new uh, with a JPEG here. We're just working with them and observing some of the changes. Again, I'll put this one on the new layer. It's called Car 3. And we give them an uphill kind of look. So what we'll do is um, we'll rotate him a little bit so he looks like he's going uphill. Let's make the car a little longer. So he's a bigger car now. And he's happy about that. And we give it kind of a an uphill effect, like he's trying to push himself uphill a bit. Now you notice if I rotate this far enough, it will cover the other car because we don't have a transparent background for a JPEG. And then just move him over a bit. And we'll just do one more. And that'll round this off. Add another layer. I'll call this car four. And I'll bring this in onto the stage. And I'll resize it down to about a quarter stage size. And we'll just give him a compact car here. So it's already kind of small, but let's make it a little smaller. Just drag one of the end handles and compact him in a little bit. Also, he gets a little smaller. Okay, save your file. JPEGs are also widely available on the internet. And they're also a common format for some digital cameras. Keep in mind that JPEGs do add a lot to the size of your Flash movie. So importing bitmaps of all types are an issue to consider in terms of the size of the Flash movie. And uh, you should use some discretion until we get to a point where we can talk about optimization.